Well, uh, Adam here from Gen Con 2024. I am here with... Merrick. Hi, I'm Merrick Moyer. Uh, and Merrick, why don't you tell us a little, bit about, a little bit about yourself, maybe your work history, where you're coming from, how you got connected with Brotherwise and Brandon Sanderson. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, starting with Brandon Sanderson, uh, one of my most favorite authors. Uh, Wheel of Time was one of my mm. favorite series. Uh, my cousin introduced it to me when I was in middle school, and like I just read them and reread them and reread them. Brandon Sanderson obviously took over the series when Neil Jordan practically passed away, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Wow, that, you know, this was pretty good. Maybe I should check out this Brandon Sanderson guy and read a little bit more of his stuff." Started with Mistborn, was hooked. Found Stormlight and have read and reread the books many, many times. Um, as for uh, this and how this all came together, uh, I really, really wanted to work on the RPG. I've done some freelance writing in the RPG industry before with uh, Star Trek and Act on Cthulhu and The Expanse, and um, I reached out to the project manager because they'd said like, hey, you know, if you want to, throw your name out. I said, please, please, and, and they gave me a shot. They asked to see some of my writing. Uh, they liked it. They brought me in to work on the Stonewalkers adventure. Very nice. And uh, I think you have a pretty unique experience with that. Do you mind uh, digging into that a little bit more? With the Stonewalkers yeah. adventure itself? Yeah. Um, so I wrote uh, the third chapter, uh, which is one of the ones that we are partially demoing here at Gen Con. And um, I also was asked to do a little bit of work on some of the other chapters and just kind of pitch in and help with the team. Um, I had a really incredible opportunity to kind of shape what that uh, adventure through a very iconic location in uh, in the in Roshar mm -hmm. looked like, which was a dream come true for me. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier, and you said that you were, well, I overheard, he was talking okay. to someone yeah. else, yeah. I, I want to be honest, but um, <laughs> that you were able to take Brandon's outline, world Bible, however you want to describe it, and really take that and develop it into what it is now. Can you walk us through that process or what that yeah. was like for you? Yeah, the process was really, really interesting. It came through several steps. Mm -hmm. Brandon and Dan wrote the outline, had the entire story going, um, and they said, you know, here's the beginning, here's the end, here are the players in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, Brotherwise then took a look at it and sort of went, how do we turn this into a game? Because we want the players to have as much uh, activity as they can, mm -hmm. as much autonomy, sorry to name drop a shard, uh, <laughs> in, like, in the action. Mm -hmm. And so how do we turn that into a game? Mm -hmm. uh, the first chapter had been written when I was brought on, and they brought on two writers, uh, me and one other person, Imogen, she's fantastic. Uh, she wrote chapter two and I wrote chapter three. And then uh, Amber and Sadie came in and they did five and six and, and four. How did we work that out? It was months ago. But those sort of kept going as we, as we developed them. Uh, we looked at the whole thing and said, you know, this is really great, but we need to kind of align a lot of the... Things. It's, it's a development process. Mm -hmm. We've done our first drafts and now we're revising. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Imogen and I came in and we, and we helped out and uh, worked really collaboratively with uh, Lila, who's our project manager, mm -hmm. and just put together uh, this more polished, further along draft that we have right now that we're so excited for people to look at. Um, I was really excited to come in and do a little bit of work on chapter six on the finale uh, and work up chapter three a little bit more um, to kind of talk about those chapter three is a little bit of kind of your your expected dungeon crawl mm -hmm. so you got a variety of scenes that you go into you talk to a bunch of people you fight a couple of monsters you come up against a big bat who monologues at you mm -hmm. Really cool, fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're supposed to monologue. Oh, well, they don't do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the cool thing about the system is that when you're around level three, mm -hmm. that's when people are really picking up their radiant mm. stuff. Like, you get some access around level two if you choose, but around level three is when things start to hit and people start to get the really strange, <laughs> strong, powerful mm -hmm. abilities, right? So, as game designers, we got to think like, you know, it was hard for them to climb this before. 
but now they have gravitation mm -hmm. and they're just going to fly up. So how are we going to challenge them? How are we going to do interesting things and make those interesting moments at the table shine? Mm -hmm. um, I got to run uh, the City That Smolders with some brand new players, people who had never seen the rules yet. Today, uh, City That Smolders is the name of Chapter 3. And, uh, I mean, they loved it. We had this incredible moment where uh, uh, a nascent windrunner and Will Shaper both swore their first ideal, you know, stormlight streaming off of them, fighting the big bad. Uh, one of them picked them up, pulled them up in the air, tried to drop them. It was great. It was really great. Uh, sounds incredible. Mm -hmm. I imagine that's kind of a... I mean, in my mind, an otherworldly, otherworldly experience being able to watch people live out something that you were had so like hands-on in creation. What was that feeling like? Oh, it's incredibly gratifying. I mean, I I feel so privileged to be able to tell stories in this world, um, stories that are going to be considered part of the Stormlight story mm -hmm. because Brandon wrote this. Mm -hmm. Um, we now know what kind of happened behind the scenes and anyone who is sort of like a fan of the books and is into TTRPGs is going to look at this and go, I know a little bit more. I know another secret. Like, it's just very cool. And then to see people like engaging with it and having fun at the table, there's, there's no better feeling. Earlier you were talking about uh, people coming into their powers in chapter three and maybe, you know, basically godlike powers as we would see them today. Uh, it, there's also the ability in these games to play as someone without these kinds of powers. How did you guys go about crafting a game that felt balanced and interesting and still kind of filled with possibilities for people who wanted to go kind of uh, power route versus mundane? Yeah, so... I am mostly on the writing team. I get to peek okay. at the designers. Okay. They're doing incredible work. But like, the balanced conversations are always there. Investiture, you can only pull so much. You have a limiting factor. There are only a certain number of actions that you can take on your turn. You have to choose. And although invested characters like Radiance, they have all these additional cool things that they can do, other heroic paths still get very cool, interesting things. And gravitation doesn't super help you in a conversation where yeah. you've got to, you know, navigate a lefty high society. Because the game is not just combat. Yeah. And it's not just flying around being a superhero either. Uh, there's a lot of things that scholars and envoys and hunters need to be doing. And on top of that, you could go you know, one level of a heroic path and then 19 levels of radiant. Mm -hmm. But it's not really that optimal. It's really cool in the system because there are, like it's completely open multi-classing. So you can take two levels of envoy, one level of hunter, three levels of warrior, and then go 15 into Windrunner. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paladin, right? He's he's the character who's got some scholar, he's got some warrior, mm -hmm. he's probably got some leader. Yep. And then he's got a bunch of Windrunner on top of that. But if you want to be Kaladin, you need that surgery expertise and experience as well, which you don't get as a Windrunner. Yeah. So if you want to tell a good story, you got to be, you got to have variety. Yeah. Little balance, but you know, obviously with a specialty. Yeah. Um, again, earlier you were talking about uh, people being able to come into this game with a little Stormlight knowledge, a little uh, TTRPG knowledge. Yeah. What would you say to someone who maybe is coming with just Stormlight expertise or coming just with TTRPG expertise? What yeah. can they expect? I know those are two opposite questions, but. Um, uh, what would you say to those people? Absolutely. I mean, try the game. I mean, you're just, you're, the point of the game is to have fun. Um, and we're trying our best to make sure that you have fun no matter what level of experience or knowledge you have. And if you are a diehard Stormlight fan who has never played a role-playing game before, like, you kind of already know how to play because the game is mimicking the books. Mm -hmm. We are putting your characters into these challenging situations and asking them to succeed or fail and grow from them. And as you grow, you level up and you get more powers and you get more interesting things. You swear some ideals. 
Um, if you're a TTRPG person and you don't know the Stormlight Archive, you need to read the books or audiobook them or like just look up a summary. We've got them in the World Guide. Plug. Uh, but it's uh, it's a very accessible, recognizable system. Um, you're going to roll a d20, you're going to add a number, and if you rolled high enough, you're probably going to succeed. Uh, we've got the cool plot die, which people have probably heard a lot about, but gives you radiations of success and, and narrative, where you can succeed with a consequence, or you can fail with opportunity. And, um, the system is very flexible, very... Uh, kind of choose your own complexity as well. Okay. Because if you are someone who loves TTRPGs, doesn't know Stormlight, and just kind of wants to play, stick with the heroic habits. If you really like like complexity and, and coming up with a whole bunch of different options, go with a Radiant Path and beg your GM to let you take multiple Radiant Paths. Oh, that's fine. I mean, it's not technically a rule, but I'm not going to stop you. I'm not in charge of you. <laughs> uh, speaking of rules, yeah. and uh, again, this may not be quite in the sphere that you helped in uh, the, the creation of this game. What are the house rules that you see becoming uh, used or created or anything like that, if that's something that you've given any thought to? Uh, house rules, let's see. Um, I mean, I want to pump up our system. Our system is fantastic. Our designers are incredible. They've thought of all these things, and you don't need to house rule it. But if you had to... <laughs> Perfect um, answer. <laughs> uh, use the plot die a lot and come up with cool ways to do it. Um, come up with ways that players are more encouraged to use the plot die. Or um, come up with interesting things around your table where... Uh, when you're getting those opportunities and complications, uh, you have kind of an idea of what you want to do, or you really just want to go like, really, let's change the narrative on a dime as soon as like that cool little symbol comes up. Like, I think that that's the, the most interesting place to play with our rule system. So with these complications, the plot die, I'm assuming all the stuff that happens to these people, you're welcome, is going to be your fault my fault. So personally. what what is the one that you're most excited about people running into uh, complication wise or plot wise? Mm -hmm. with, obviously we don't want to spoil anything okay. but in, like, uh, in our Stonewalkers adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what did I do to people? Oh man. It's <laughs> a great question. What did I do to people? Um, I'm going to tell you that the final combat of the campaign I play tested with a group just last week and it was intense and fun and I really look forward to hearing stories about how people survive if possible okay yeah um, have there been uh, I know you've been running the game a lot uh, these last couple days here at Gen Con has there been anything that's really taken you by surprise or maybe out of the box thinking? Again, this might not make it because it could be spoilery, but uh, I've, curiosity I've got, question. Yeah, yeah, I've got one that is not a spoiler. It was a character's action that was fantastic. Uh, we were playing the Bridge Nine Level One Adventure, and the character who was an agent, um, so again, not a Radiant, a level one character, no invested abilities, decided that he was going to sprint forward and slide underneath his friend's legs to land a kick in the softer portions of a Parshendi Warfor and uh, rolled incredibly. Uh, got uh, the hit, the cheap shot stunned the Parshendi. But, you know, I said, that's pretty risky, let's raise the stakes, caught the complication, yeah. and the Parshendi, completely stunned, landed right on top of him. And he was stuck underneath this incredible, like, what, 500 pound yeah. Warform Parshendi warrior? Uh, which was a great moment for all the other players at the table to be like, oh no, our agent, you're yeah. stuck, but we've got other people that we're fighting. So, uh, that is a hilarious complication. Yeah, uh, it was great. Uh, how did they get out of that, or how did he get out of that? Uh, he pulled his dagger and just started stabbing. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess that's a pretty, uh, makes yeah. sense. So, Merrick, obviously you had all your hands in on the creation of this story as you were working on this. And obviously you're a fan of the franchise, or the IP, uh, based on the tattoo. 
um, yep, sorry, off screen, beautiful tattoos. Um, what do you think makes Roshar such a great environment for uh, story crafting or collaborative story crafting, if that's what we want to call it, through mm -hmm. a TTRPG setting? Okay, uh, you hit on something that I love about Stormlight, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, Roshar and Stormlight, Stormlight, to me, are these incredible stories about how these humble or amazing characters grow and change and the challenges that they face. I don't feel like I've ever read any other fantasy story that goes into those internal depths of like Paladin and Shallan, the way that Stormlight mm -hmm. does. And coming from a Wheel of Time, a Wheel of Time fan, where the main character is like, I must do this, no matter the cost to myself. And then coming into Stormlight mm -hmm. to this, I must do this, but I'm allowed to take a break. Yeah. It's so meaningful mm -hmm. to have that kind of story. And then to invite people to come in and tell their own stories and make those characters and discover that, like, for these people that they make, it's so powerful. It's better than any other role play. Um, and, like, just to see the sort of growth and then face the challenges that I hope every game master sends against your players, not just antagonists from the, from the books, but the personal obstacles that you need to overcome as you grow through the story, like, that's what I want to hear. That's why those are the stories that I want people to tell with this game. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is why Roshar is, is just perfect for a role playing game. So obviously, uh, we're going to have a lot of representation, kind of the classic representation, re representation from uh, Roshar, the Radiance, Merchant class, Bright Lords, Ladies, I'm sure all those are going to be seen. How uh, did you, how did Brotherwise go about in representing maybe the non human yeah. uh, people of Roshar, the Parshendi? Yeah, so it was incredibly important to us to tell the story of the singers from the singer's point of view. So we go to great lengths to not call them, you know, Parshmen or to make them a single culture. We really want to understand the, the struggle that comes from losing your identity for thousands of years and then suddenly being brought back and realizing that you've been enslaved. Mm -hmm. And the challenges there are something that Brandon did so well. Because I remember finishing um, uh, Words of Radiance and going, here we go, we're on to a big battle. Mm -hmm. And being that Kaladin, like, dropping in Hearthstone and being like, what do you mean the, the Parchman yeah. didn't attack? Yeah. And as I'm reading Oathbringer, I'm like, this is different. This is a different story that, for lack of a better term, humanizes our badness. And so that really needed to come forward in the RPG. So singers are playable. They have an entire ancestry of their own. You can choose to be a listener, or you can choose to be a singer that has been awakened by the Everstorm, depending on where your GM sets the campaign, obviously. Um, as a singer, you have your own talent tree that represents sort of your mastery of your forms. If you want to go into sort of more nimble form, or if you want to be more war form, or if you want to take up with an odium uh, spren and go with a form of power, like those are interesting and available options. But again, everything in the book wants you to understand that the singers are not the bad guys. Odium is the bad guy. And a lot of singers choose Odium, but a lot of humans choose Odium too. So like, it's it's got to be a story about people being people. And I think that that was something so important to include in the RPG. And, and like, play singers. I, I want to play a singer. I, I have a couple of singer characters I've done in playtests. Oh, that is amazing. Merrick, thank you very much again for taking time out of your incredibly busy day. I've never been to Gen Con before. This place is crazy. This is my first year. Oh, it, it seems to be the case for a lot of people, and maybe it's everyone's first year out there because it is <laughs> crowded. Yeah, it's wild. It's incredible. Again, thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. You.